welcome back for another episode of the podcast going live inside the Facebook group as well. So if you're not already in there, smartphonephotographytraining.com forward slash community, that's how you'll jump in there. Be great to have you in here. So I've gone live inside the Facebook group as well this morning and uh, so I'm kind of halfway between Australian time and US time for, for the best time for viewers. So if someone's in there, jump in, say good day. that'd be fantastic. What am I gonna cover this in this episode is rule of thirds. It's one of the, uh, one of the, one of the main compositional techniques and what is composition now you probably guess second episode in this is the kind of level that i'm pitching the training at is so that it's basic to intermediate some of these things you might have heard of before and that's fantastic hopefully i might even explain in a different way that you go oh i never thought of it that way all these techniques and tips that i'm going to be sharing as part of this podcast now rule of thirds is a composition composition is where you how you frame and how you set up the, the image. So that's what we're going to get into today. So the big question is this, how do smartphone photo enthusiasts like us become that creative and confident photographer we desire and deserve to be, creating those beautiful, impactful photos? This podcast will give you the answers. I'm Mike and welcome to the Smartphone Photography Club. All right, so that's the intro music. I'm still getting used to the software and what I'm using here. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm loving it. <laughs> All right, so composition. It's really important because it's really the transformation from going from taking snapshots to taking more strategic, created images where people go, wow, that's a cool image because you've done it intentionally. Rule of thirds is a way that you actually, to summarize it in, in a quick um, form, it is where you position the main subject and uh, and, off center, basically. That's what it is in a nutshell. Now, rule of thirds, you split it up and all that sort of thing. We'll go into all that and, and you place things in different areas in the image and then other area, other uh, parts and elements and supporting uh, items in the frame, support the story and all that sort of thing. But basically, if you don't wanna focus on the lines and intersecting lines and all that technical stuff, basically it just means place things off center, not smack bang in the middle of the screen. Because what happens then is when we look at a photo and your eye goes to the main subject in the middle of the screen, you go, oh yeah, cool. And your eye is not encouraged to go into areas. That's why there's other compositional techniques like um, uh, uh, active space, negative space, all these things to try and encourage your eye to move around. And we'll go into more of these compositional techniques like leading lines and tones and balance and it's, oh, it's, there's so many techniques, but the main one that I want you to focus on first is rule of thirds, because it's easy to implement, and you're probably already doing it yourself. And I mean, if you go away somewhere uh, and you want to take a, a, a selfie, and you want to, and I covered that in the last episode, it is important to take selfies. All right, <laughs> we need to, we need to get over ourselves. We need to get in front of the camera sometimes. Now. When you do that and you're in a location, you'll always instinctively, you'll put yourself off to the side because you want people to see over your shoulder. Okay, so this is, this is not something completely new to you. So what you're doing is you're, you're, you're saying, okay, here I am, but have a look at where I am. So you're the main subject uh, because you're, you're a face, you're a person, people's eye goes to you straight away. And then have a look at the rest of it. And that's what rule of thirds basically is, is splitting this, the image up into thirds both horizontally and vertically, and uh, and you're placing the main subject in one of those thirds, in a nutshell. All right, uh, if you are listening to this in the podcast, fantastic, leave a review, comment on your, on your platform, that would be brilliant, because that helps shape the direction of this podcast. If you wanna watch the visuals of what I'm talking about here, and I will try and explain it as much as I can, so that if you're listening, then you won't miss out, but, uh, but on live, um, on YouTube, you'll be able to uh, see all the latest podcast episodes in there and actually be able to visualize and, and, and see me waving and, 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 and talking to you that way. All right, so rule of thirds. What, what I have here is I actually have an article on my website that I'm going to go through. So basically go to smartphonephotographytraining.com, go into the menu, and I'll bring up my screen here for those of, that are on YouTube. Okay, tap on there and I'll go to uh, learn and then scroll to free tutorials. All right, so this is smartphonephotographytraining.com forward slash tutorials. This is probably the best way to get to it. And then moving up, I've got these into categories 
and I have one here, composition. So rule of thirds, grid lines on the iPhone and Android smartphone explained. That's what it is. And that's what we're going to do here is we're going to explain it. And I won't go too, hopefully I won't go too long into this because it's not a complicated concept, but I want to explain it to you and then show you a couple of um, variations of it and how you can use it to, to great effect as well. So basically rule of thirds, what you do is on your iPhone, you turn on grid lines. So in settings now, and this changes depending on when you're listening to this, every time they update uh, the operating system on Androids or, or the iPhone, quite often they'll go and change where they put things. So I'm reluctant to say, go, go here, then there, then there, because you could do that and go, Mike doesn't know what he's talking about because <laughs> it's changed, all right? So in the iPhone at the moment, you go into uh, camera, in the settings and then it's got it's got a new section in there called composition it's the only one in there it's called composition and then uh grid lines uh grids on most androids it's actually inside the camera itself when you turn on the camera you go into settings and there'll be an option there grid lines so not grid it'll be grid lines okay what that does is that will create an overlay of your preview when you're looking at the um, through the viewfinder or through the screen it has two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. And that's correct. it's like a tic-tac-toe board. And what that's doing is that is actually, it looks like that there if you're watching on YouTube, what that does is that creates nine boxes. It does, so you've got uh, two vertical lines, two horizontal. Now the idea of this is to actually, I'll bring myself up in the screen there as well. The idea of that is to position the main subject on one of those lines. And then that forces you to place the subject off center, so not smack bang in the middle of the screen, which is, it's really static, it's not dynamic, it doesn't encourage your eye to look beyond uh, what's going on in the, in the frame. Now, if you're looking at this through landscape orientation or you've selected the square camera, it will adopt um, and change the position of those, those lines as well. All right. Uh, what else did I want to explain here? So that's, so you can see there you've got two vertical lines, you've got two, or you can imagine, and two horizontal, two vertical. Those lines intersect at four points, all right? So those four points are the, kind of the sweet spot, they are. And if you look at the front magazine, you'll see a, 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 a model or a person there, and you'll see that their eye, because that is the main focus point of a portrait, is the person's eye, most generally speaking, that will be in one of those four intersecting points because it's off center both vertically and horizontally. Does that make sense? So it's not in the middle of the screen going up and down, looking at up and down. It's not in the middle looking at the screen left and right. So it's off center both vertically and horizontally. So if you can do that, your photos instantly will be transformed because it looks like you've put some thought behind the photo. Okay, all right. So. Uh, why use this? Why use this rule? Just going through my article here. Uh, encouraged to look beyond the main subject and further explore the remaining. And four intersecting points covered that. How to turn it on. Now I've had people reach out in the past and say, "Mike, I don't, I don't, I can't find it, or my my particular Android doesn't have the grids." That's fine. What you can do, and what I love doing, is just. Quite often you'll be in the moment and just take the photo and you'll forget about composition, all right? I know it happens to all of us, you just go, okay, I need to take this photo and you'll just lift it up and just go, snap, take the photo. When, you, when it comes to editing the photo, you can, uh, when you crop it, whether that's in the native editor, most of them, or Snapseed, Lightroom, whatever your favorite editing app is, when you crop, it'll actually display that overlay and it's there to assist you it is to, to reframe the photo which is which is brilliant it's that's so good so that's how you do that okay now two variations so i'll bring it up on the screen here. here's an here's an example of a fish and the eye even though this is a fish it's not a human the eye is still the main focal point because that's the connection that's the connection you want and you can see in this photo here you can imagine it i've got a fish underwater and on the top of the two horizontal lines, I have the surface of the water. Now, in this image, it was just cool lighting. I've got these really, and I know there's a technical term for it, but there was some really cool uh, color 
through the uh, through the glass and through the surface of the water. This is the nice blue and green, and that is along the top edge. That is, and then along the uh, so that's along the top edge, and then down on the bottom edge. The, sorry, the, that's along the top line. Along the bottom of the two horizontal lines, I then have the fish's eye, and the fish is facing from left to right. So he looks like he's swimming towards the left side of the frame. And on that intersecting point of the vertical and horizontal, I then have the fish's eye. And I went in there and I did a bit of manipulation and, and highlighted the eye, made it look brighter and all that sort of thing. But it's right on that intersecting sweep point, that is. So that's why it just, it just works. It works so well. Now where this could be a little bit different is if you take a different orientation photo. So if you take a square photo, and then you, do, you apply these lines and it'll automatically do that on your viewfinder if you have grids or grid lines activated. What will happen is it'll put it and it'll split it into nine squares. And then when you go and put something in that one of those four intersecting points, and this is the variation. When you look at a square image, it looks like it's just slightly off center and it doesn't have the same impact as a landscape where being off center is further away from the center, if that makes sense. So when you're off center on a landscape, it's, it's kind of further away than a square where you cut that into three sections, nine sections, the four intersecting points are a lot closer to the center. So what I do is I will actually extend in my own mind, I'll extend those four intersecting points and make them further out towards the edges. So I've got an example of a, of a bee on the screen here. And this bee, yes, it's a square, looks great but I wanted to have the, the face of the B, the head of the B, further towards the edge. And that encourages, so you pick up on that. And what that does is that gives you a lot more space around the, um, the rest of the B to then explore. So I haven't created that situation where it's static right in the middle of the image. Okay. All right, so that's one variation. The other variation is, uh, well, that's the main one. I don't think I'll go into the other one because it's a little bit complicated. I was going to talk about the, the Fibonacci spiral and it's a bit more of a complicated uh, compositional technique because there's so many people misinterpret it. And there's, there's, there's Fibonacci rule, there's Fibonacci uh, curve, square. The main one is the Fibonacci curve and that basically where it spirals, if you can imagine an eggshell, uh, of a, um, not an eggshell, sorry, a snail shell, you, and you see these where you, you follow the outside of the snail and then it kind of goes in and it spins around and spirals, spirals, spirals. It gets tighter and tighter and tighter until it stops. And that's kind of what the Fibonacci rule is, is it takes a curve inside your landscape orientation photo. It takes a curve from the bottom left corner and, it's, and it curves around right up the top edge, the far right edge, bottom edge, and then, and then it gets tighter and tighter and tighter until it creates a point at the end where it stops and it's kind of off center both vertically and horizontally so people think okay that's like a rule of thirds because it's off center and that's not wrong but to make it work you need to have some sort of leading line or uh, the, the, the top edges of items within the frame that kind of follow that curve so you need that curve that sweeping curve to bring around so that's a variation of it so Apologies if that got a little bit technical, a little bit complicated um, if you're listening on the podcast. But uh, so that's that's what I really wanted to explain to you is, is rule of thirds, how it works, why we do it, more importantly. We're not just doing it for the sake of doing it. And, and, you'll, and you'll start doing this all the time. Just It's the number one thing is just think the main subject, here it is, I want to have it off center. And I want to have it off center to the side where there's something in the background that supports the, the story. The context is the big word, not so much storytelling, but context, okay? Storytelling, I know for myself, I got confused for so long with that word. <laughs> Basically, it's just context. So having the main subject off-center and uh, and then, uh, yeah, having the supporting context offside. So that's, that's great. The other variation that I want to talk about is the, if it's a square, have those four intersecting points, just imagine they're further out closer to the edge. So you want your main subject closer to the edge on a square photo. The other variation, just quickly, now Fibonacci, I went on a bit of a tangent there. The other variation that I wanted to talk about is one third, two thirds. Now this is one that's, that's, that's not very commonly known. Basically, if we take that 
So bring up that screen again with the, uh, with the fish. Basically what you do is you will fill up one of those lines. Okay, and how am I best to explain this? So in this image that I have here, I have a fish and the fish is underwater. And you can imagine along the top line, the top of the two lines is the, the surface. So two thirds, the bottom two thirds is full of water. Okay, now the fish is going along that bottom horizontal line and it's taking up two of those, uh, two of those, oh, two of those intersecting lines. So it's taking up the bottom horizontal line. <laughs> I'll get there. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, hard, it's so much easier to explain this visually. So that's what I want this podcast is I want to be able to explain things in a way that you can listen while you're driving or walking and be able to visualize these things because we're visual people, aren't we? So that bottom horizontal line, I've basically filled up two thirds of that with the fish. So it's covering those two bottom two intersecting points. So the, where the one third, two thirds comes along is that it's taken up the bottom third and it's only taken up two thirds of that bottom third. If that makes sense, all right, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so. The story with this image is that this fish is underwater. So that's why two thirds of the image is made up of the water, okay? Above the horizon, like if you imagine a landscape, if the sky's dull and boring, you just want one third of that. You want two thirds being underneath the horizon where the main activity is. So that's what's happening here. And then two thirds of that section underneath the horizon is filled up with that fish. So that's the one third, two thirds. That's the other variation. Fantastic, I think that's it. I'll wrap that up there. So yeah, check that uh, article out on the website and all my free articles, just go to smartphonephotographytraining.com forward slash tutorials. And uh, yeah, and I hope to see you there and I will catch you next time.